Welcome to the intense world of aerial warfare with the 1964 TV series, 12 O'Clock High. This gripping show takes you back to World War II, focusing on the challenges faced by the 8th Air Force as they navigate the perilous skies. The straightforward storytelling and compelling characters make it a classic in military television history. As you dive into the series, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. There are moments that will leave you chuckling, others that will shock you, and some that will tug at your heartstrings. So buckle up and keep your eyes peeled for the funny, shocking, and sad facts that lie ahead. Now here's a question for you. Is there a particular scene or moment in 12 o'clock high that has had a lasting impact on you? Or perhaps do you have a cherished memory associated with this series? We're eager to hear your stories and experiences, so drop them in the comments below. Get ready for a journey through the highs and lows of wartime drama and share your thoughts with us. Your cherished memories are an essential part of the 12 o'clock high legacy. Let the storytelling begin. The 1964 TV series 12 O'Clock High had a lasting effect on military television history. The portrayal of the 8th Air Force's challenges during World War II stays with viewers due to its simple storytelling and interesting characters. The show's strength lies in taking the audience through a mix of emotions. Moments of humor, surprise, and touching scenes create a varied experience in this wartime drama. Viewers get drawn into a compelling journey through the ups and downs of aerial warfare, what makes 12 O'Clock High stand out is not just its depiction of the harsh realities of war, but also its exploration of the human side within the military setting. The characters aren't just soldiers, they're individuals with unique stories, making the series relatable on a personal level. Even decades after its initial airing, 12 O'Clock High remains relevant. Its exploration of leadership, camaraderie, and the toll of war on individuals goes beyond its historical background the series touches on universal themes that still connect with audiences today. 12 O'Clock High's influence goes beyond its original broadcast, shaping later generations of military dramas. Its impact is evident in the nuanced approach many shows take when dealing with the complexities of war and its effects on those involved. In essence, 12 O'Clock High stands as proof of the enduring power of well-crafted storytelling. Its significance lies not only in its historical accuracy and attention to detail, but also in its ability to connect with viewers on a deep and emotional level. As we revisit this classic series, we're reminded that its themes are timeless, ensuring its continued relevance in television's ever-changing landscape. Exploring the creation of the 1964 TV series reveals the key figures who shaped its success. The minds behind the scenes, including creators, producers, and directors, played pivotal roles in bringing the intense world of aerial warfare to life. Their dedication to portraying the challenges faced by the 8th Air Force during World War II laid the foundation for the show's lasting significance in military television history. Heading the production was a team of skilled individuals who meticulously crafted the wartime drama. Their attention to detail and ability to capture the nuances of aerial combat added depth to the storytelling, making each episode a captivating journey for viewers. The cast, the heart and soul of the show brought a unique flair to their roles, turning characters into relatable individuals with compelling stories. The casting process, filled with interesting trivia, unfolded to assemble a cast that could authentically portray the human side within the military setting. One standout aspect of the casting process was the selection of actors for key roles, ensuring a seamless blend of talent and chemistry. The dynamic relationships between the cast members were a result of careful consideration, going beyond scripted lines. Among the actors, some left a lasting impression on the series, bringing humor, surprise, and touching moments to the forefront. The casting choices not only reflected the demands of wartime roles, but also showcased the versatility of the actors who brought the characters to life. Exploring the actors and their roles reveals that the enduring significance of the show is not solely rooted in historical accuracy. The series tapped into universal themes such as leadership, camaraderie, and the toll of war, resonating with audiences even today. The show's impact extends beyond its initial broadcast, influencing subsequent generations of military dramas and shaping the way war stories are told on television. 
In conclusion, the collaborative efforts of the creators, producers, directors, and cast resulted in a poignant reminder of the human experience within the chaos of war. Their contributions, both behind and in front of the camera, created a timeless piece of television that continues to connect with viewers on a deep and emotional level. Switching from the late night schedule to a more viewer-friendly 7.30 p.m. time slot, Robert Lansing was replaced in the 1965 season of the series. Surprisingly, the decision was influenced by Paul Burke's youthful appearance, even though Lansing was the younger actor. This change in casting reflects the practical considerations of television scheduling. An interesting connection is found in the soundtrack, where parts of the music used in Star Trek are also used in the transitions of 12 o'clock high. This subtle link between the two series adds an interesting layer to the sound experience of both shows. Looking at the characters, the series draws from its cinematic predecessor, keeping Brigadier General Frank Savage and Major Harvey Stovall as central figures. Major Joe Cobb, Flight Surgeon Major Doc Kaiser, and General Pritchard make regular appearances, while Lieutenant Colonel Ben Gately undergoes a name change to Joe Gallagher, starting as a captain. The narrative briefly introduces characters like Lieutenant Bishop, Lieutenant Zimmerman, and Captain Gately in smaller roles, differing from their movie counterparts. However, they are brief appearances and are not seen again. As the series progresses into its second season, Joe Gallagher rises to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, taking command of the 918th Bomb Group after Savage's death. Notably, Cobb's fate differs from the movie plot, and Doc Kaiser, along with General Pritchard, remains consistently present throughout the show's run. This look into the series changes highlights the dynamic nature of its character lineup, creating a portrayal of military life during World War II. The strategic adjustments in casting and the connected musical themes add to the varied appeal of 12 o'clock high, resonating with audiences beyond its initial broadcast. The shift in command from Keith Davenport to Frank Savage as the 918th's commander remains a notable development in the series. The precise reasons for this change are left unexplored, adding an air of mystery to Savage's assumption of leadership. This deliberate omission encourages viewers to focus on the unfolding dynamics within the 8th Air Force, where leadership transitions bring their own set of challenges and uncertainties. A factual detail about the B-17s in the European Theater of Operations is worth noting. All B-17s, including the B-17G models, were equipped with nose guns. Some variations featured plexiglass noses, housing a minimum of two guns in the nose glass area. This design detail underscores the formidable firepower these aircraft possessed, highlighting the technological aspects of wartime aviation. Interestingly, the producer's attempt to secure sponsorship adds a layer of historical curiosity. When Volkswagen executives were presented with the pilot episode featuring actual wartime bombing footage, a surprising twist unfolded. Recognizing their own plant being bombed, the executives promptly withdrew from sponsoring the show. This anecdote sheds light on the unpredictable turns faced by the series in its quest for financial support, offering a glimpse into the challenges of navigating the television industry. In the second season, a shift in the series' schedule prompted the replacement of Robert Lansing with Paul Burke, driven by practical considerations rather than age-related factors. This alteration reflects the pragmatic nature of television scheduling decisions, where the appearance of actors plays a crucial role in audience engagement. A subtle connection between the soundtracks of 12 o'clock high and Star Trek adds an intriguing dimension to the viewing experience. Shared musical themes between the two series create an unexpected link contributing to the auditory appeal of both shows. This intertextual connection showcases the nuanced ways in which different elements of television production can intersect and influence one another. Character developments in the series, such as Joe Gallagher rising to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and assuming command of the 918th Bomb Group after Savage's death, showcase the dynamic nature of the narrative. These strategic adjustments in casting and character arcs, coupled with consistent appearances of key figures like Doc Kaiser and General Pritchard, contribute to the varied and evolving portrayal of military life during World War II. In conclusion, the TV series 12 O'Clock High delves into the complexities of wartime leadership transitions, aircraft design nuances, and the unpredictable world of securing sponsorships in the television industry. 
These aspects, along with shifts in casting and unexpected musical connections, enrich the viewer's understanding of the show's multifaceted nature and its enduring relevance in military television history, showcasing the ever-evolving landscape of wartime dramas on screen.